production onto something as small as this. Well, this is the largest CD processing plant in Britain. We've come here to find out how they're made. It's certainly a high-tech operation, from racks of digital equipment to areas that look like operating theatres. Dave Wilson is the customer services manager here at the plant. Dave, first of all, why are some of the people wearing surgical gowns? Well, the thing is, there's an incredible amount of information on this disc. So even the smallest speck of dust could destroy that information. So everything has to be kept spotlessly clean. So is that whole process more difficult than pressing vinyl? It certainly is, yes. If you look at uh, a vinyl record, then it's, it's just pressed out of a, a simple piece of plastic. And the sort of dimensions that we're talking about on vinyl are fairly large, probably about the size or the diameter of a human hair. On a compact disc, we're talking about something that's nearly a hundred times smaller. So is there more detail on a CD than a vinyl disc, even though it's a lot smaller? Tremendous amount, tremendous amount. There's as many as 5,000 million pits of information on every disc. Do you think CD is going to overtake vinyl in sales? It's going to overtake, and eventually we won't have any vinyl. Already in albums, we can see that uh, CD sales are taking over from vinyl and are matching cassettes. For singles, over the last year, it's grown tremendously. We've got nearly 50% of all singles now coming out on CDs, and it's growing every, every week. How long do you think it'll be before vinyl disappears forever? Forever. Probably three, four, five years. So at the moment, CD is as advanced as the industry has gone. So what's next? Well, this is the audio disc. But with this, now we can see the music, because this is CD video. And if we just have a little look at this, This is a different machine. We can't play CDV on a normal CD player. This is a combi player. This will play CDs. It'll play these. It'll also play both 8-inch and 12-inch discs. That could be concerts or effectively the album version of, of this. This gives you uh, the video to go with the single. And with this, you've got maybe a five-minute video track plus three or four audio tracks going along with it. And, and this is now, this is in the shops now. So presumably, as we go further forward, we're going to have CD videos where all the album tracks have videos that go with them? I guess so, yeah. So is CDV taking off? Certainly. It was launched just before Christmas, and already there's a tremendous amount of interest. Everybody's struggling to get players. So now we know just about everything about CDs. Can we see how one's made? Well, why don't we take this and follow it right through from the beginning of the process to the end of the line? OK. <laughs> This is an electronic picture of how the music looks in a recording studio. We call it analog. You can see that the waves are bouncing up and down. Now, the first thing we need to do is to turn it into a digital signal. That's just like computers use. That's much easier to handle. Then we record it on this, a digital master tape. And in fact, this is the one for in excess. Now, the most important thing we have to do next is to check out the track timings, to make sure that all the tracks are in the right place. And how do we do that? Well. Over there. Should we go and have a look? OK, so this is a digital editor. Now, on here, we can go through and check off the start position of each track. We can position it exactly so that we make sure we don't cut off any of the music. And once we've done that, what's next? Then we go off and master it. And what does that mean? Well, let's go and have a look. OK. OK, so this is the mastering machine. And the digital audio tape goes in here. And then the signals from there come up to this box, where we do the special encoding for CD. CD's got a form of error correction that means that even if you scratch the disc, the music quality won't be spoiled. Now, the signals from here go through to the laser beam recorder. There, we've got a glass plate that's been coated with a layer of photo recess. That's just like a photographic film. And then a laser beam exposes small areas on that plate. And that's effectively the music. OK, so now we're in the really clean part, so... 
Once we've exposed the master, the next part of the process is to develop it. And this is the developer over here. In here, the various chemicals soften up the photoresist layer and cause a series of pits to be formed. In fact, that's the way that the information is coded on the disk. There's thousands or even millions and millions of tiny little pits. From the developer, then we go to put down a layer of silver onto the master so that we can actually play it. In the evaporator, we're going to effectively boil up some silver and coat it with a very thin layer. From the evaporator, we can put the, uh, put the master actually on a player, play it and check all these signals on there, both by listening to them and measuring them like computer signals. When we're happy that everything's correct, then we can go through to the stamper making process. Now in this process, the first thing we need to do is to grow a layer of nickel onto the master plate. We do that by placing it in a bath and literally electroplating this thin layer of nickel onto it. The stamper is effectively the pressing plate that we're going to use to make the discs. It's very thin, it's about a third of a millimetre thick. So what we do is we separate it from the master and then we clean it up. And we call this a father. Now, once we've got a father, we can make a whole family of samplers. That means that if we've got a real hit on our hands, we can put it on a lot of machines and produce a lot of discs very quickly. I think this stamp is ready to go over the road for pressing. Now the stamp is on the machine, then we force hot molten plastic against it to form an image of the information on the disc. The robot comes in and transfers the disc to the line. It travels down there to the metallization unit. Now you can see that the discs are reflected so that the laser in the player can read the information. The next stage is to lacquer the disc to protect the information. First of all, we trim them. And then they go on to a special centrifuge where we apply a small amount of lacquer and then as it spins up to a high speed, the lacquer is flung off to form a thin coating. And then it's on to the oven to dry. The next part of the process is printing the label. The label information is contained on this plate, and the ink rests on the plate and is, is then transferred to the disc, one layer at a time. At the end of the process, we're going to check each disc very carefully to make sure that it's perfect and then it's gonna go into the packing department. Sleeve notes into the box, disc in, and then they were on the way to the shop. Okay, there you are, Simon. There's your disc. Oh, thank you very much, Dave. That'll be 3 dollars please. Um, I think we'll actually have to wait with you, because it's now time for the very last omnibus edition of... Blue Peter! I'm sorry, with three years left to run, it's left...